Oh, hey, and welcome to yet another episode of Beetle Dustino. Continue on with the Record Store Day Black Friday 2022 releases. Uh, yesterday you saw fresh out of the store. I was sitting in the parking lot of the record shop. And I showed you from the front seat of my car what all I'd picked up. So I think you all know what's coming here right now. But we haven't seen what the records look like. And all these got that nice special colored vinyl, which Beetle, Brad, and I both really like. <laughs> All right. Before I get started, though, I just want to thank all my returning viewers. Thanks to everybody new that has subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed, please do hit the notification bell, too, so you know when I got new videos coming out. Um, do give me a like on the video if you did like it. And also leave a comment. I love having a conversation with everybody. I respond to everybody. So leave a comment and we'll have a little conversation. So, all right. But anyways, let's get on with the video. So yeah, it was Black Friday here in the United States, so the day after Thanksgiving. The day crazy people go into Walmart and smack each other down for a cheap TV that, that should be cheap anyway, because it probably was cheap to begin with, so they're getting what they pay for. <laughs> <laughs> and trampling each other over garbage. The local record shops got the right idea with hosting Record Store Day on Black Friday every year. You know, it kind of warmed my heart a little knowing I was, you know, all these other people are out at like Walmarts and Best Buys and these big box stores doing all this crazy stuff to save a few cents on something that's not worth buying in the first place. You know, here we all were buying these records, which were not deep discounted by any means, supporting a local business and, you know, helping a guy out. You know, I think my heart was warmed on that, but it was warmed also because in, in our frigid cold temperatures there, <laughs> I, North Dakota here was what, I think 25 degrees my car told me this morning when I was parking there and I was the first one there. A couple other cars pulled up not long after and we all played the little game of who's going to get out of their car first and sure enough the two other gentlemen that showed up they were the first to get out and I thought well I better get out there too so even if I'm third in line not too bad. I get out there and the two of them look at me and go hey we're the line guards and you're number one you were here first. So there's a little North Dakota nice for you but you always hear that terminology in like movies and stuff Minnesota nice more than North Dakota nice but it, it spreads over to this side too. But I suppose that's kind of the the vinyl community there um, looking out for each other and you know being respectful to one another so but yeah let's let's take a look at the records. I'm going to start I'm going to go right in the order that I showed them from my car there. We'll start with the doors and the Paris Blues. Very cool cover and these are numbered. I didn't realize that at first. Now, Record Store Day's site said these were 10,000 were being produced. My number's over 10,000, so I don't know if that's accurate. And I did mention, too, that I feel like a lot of people are going to have this one. So I think this is, this is kind of a common one. But yeah, let's take a look at it. Still cool. I always enjoy the doors. Get this open. And this isn't a gatefold, so we'll just slice the end there. Got the pen knife good enough for now. And so we'll leave everything on there. I suppose I'll show you the hype sticker a little better in that cool record store day release one. And let's take a look. I have not seen this at all. I haven't really watched too many. I was more looking for anybody that had Ringo stuff. So I really have no idea what's in most of these. But yeah, this is a little insert that came in it. It looks like advertisement. Yeah, yeah that is an advertisement there. And then we got the inner sleeve here. A nice picture of the guys there. And then a little bit on the back there with the track info and a little more of the story there. And let's see that colored vinyl. That's, that's what I'm excited to see. And strange, it comes off the top. All right. Uh, yeah, there we go. Side one. A unique, cool looking label there. A very nice, dark, translucent blue. Paris Blues. Guess it's got to be blue, right? <laughs> so there we go. Okay. So up next, we got the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Return to the Dream Canteen. On this super cool. A uh, foil cover. Second double album they released within the year. 
and that's kind of shocking. I didn't even realize about this until the other day. We'll show you the hype sticker good there. I suppose I didn't show the spine on the other one, but we'll show that one there. Quite a album cover on this, even without the foil. I think this would be quite a, but the foil just really enhances it. And also not a gatefold, but it is a double album. God, I kind of want to take that shrink wrap off to look at this even better, but I don't know. I guess I'm getting a good look at it here. And this is on a neon pink vinyl. On that last album of theirs, I just recently sat down to take a listen to it. I've got a Target Edition copy of it. That I got for like half off. And uh, so this includes a poster too. And I really enjoyed that album though. I'm kind of losing my train of thought here, pulling everything out. And we'll look at the poster first, I think. Um, oof. This looks like a monster to fold out. Um, knowing these guys too, I should probably... Oh, there, it's folding out on me anyway. Uh, there we go. We're all there. Yeah, Will Ferrell too. <laughs> God, how much he looks like Will Ferrell. It's just uncanny. Let's take a look. Maybe this is disc one. Uh, no. Yeah, this is disc one. I kind of had it in there backwards. So, there's the inner sleeve for disc one. Hold that there just a little longer. Jeez, I swear Will Ferrell joined the band. <laughs> they probably hate that, though. <laughs> And that is neon pink, that is for sure. A little translucent, so that's cool. I heard somebody recently, I think it was me and Mr. Mayo talking, he likes those translucent ones a little more. And I think I, I, I'm with him on that. I like the translucent. Certain colors, I guess, are good and solid, but I'd say for the most part, the translucent colors kind of look the best. And let's see, this should be the same color, but we'll just take a look at it anyway. Other side C. Inside D. And hopefully this one's as good as that last one, because I really enjoyed listening to that. I'm looking forward to sitting down listening to it again, but I got another Chili Peppers record to listen to, so, so we'll listen to that one next. All right, and I did look up how many of, of each of these there were, and that one was limited to, to 5,000. Like I said, I don't know how accurate that site is, with the Doors one being numbered to what it was. And up next was kind of a surprise pickup for me, but I do listen to some other bands. <laughs> I know these guys kind of, I don't know what their, you know, take is now. I think they got a little over-commercialized maybe on some songs, but I really enjoyed their first album. It's the only album I've ever had of theirs. I definitely know all their other stuff, but I had this on CD back in the day. I remember the first time I heard Walking on the Sun, I said, I got to get that album. And, uh, yeah, I saw that this was available. First time ever on vinyl, and it's on a neon green. So we had neon pink going to neon green. But yeah, Smash Mouth's first album here. Let's take a look at that. And this is a gatefold, too. So I will do my signature gatefold cut here. There we go. Let's take one more look at that hype sticker. Pretty cool hype sticker. And I will take a look at it without the first one I've taken the shrink off of. How about that? And open it up. Really just the lyrics and song info here. Of course, just a single disc. Oh, very nice. Okay. Comes in a nice poly bag. So you're already getting kind of a preview of the color of it there. I don't know how neon this looks, <laughs> but it's very cool. <laughs> it does got kind of some marbling in there, almost like a yellowish. Super cool. All right, and translucent again, so everybody's sticking with the translucent. All right. I did see these guys in concert one time. Um, at a big festival I went to, and 
we had just moved down front. The band's coming up that I went with my sisters. It was who they wanted to see. It was Hanson. I'll admit that. <laughs> but, yeah, they were about maybe three, four bands in front of Hanson, and boy, did they put on a show. I think they were the first band we were down front for, too, and they we really enjoyed them. So, yeah, live, they're really good. At least back then. That was, I don't know, 2000, I think. Wow. That was a long time ago. So next, of course, one of familiar face on the channel. Hopefully you get a little more familiar, but Jimi Hendrix. I've been trying my best to get his stuff out here. And take a look at that cool spine on the Dagger Records label. Kind of his bootleg, official bootleg label that they do. Usually available just through the website. I suppose you're just doing a record store release. Still pretty limited oh, let's see here my signature gatefold move it's kind of failing here all right pull it to the side here take a look at it out of the shrink get a better view there there's like cool dagger records logo down there and look at the gatefold there and a lot of this was recorded in, um, I think, late 69 and um, early seven, 1970. A lot of it was kind of the rehearsal and jamming leading up to the uh, Band of Gypsies shows, the uh, Phil Maurice shows. Um, so, of course, it's uh, Buddy Miles and Billy Cox there. And let's see. Now, this one's actually got two separate colors. Let's start, of course, with disc one. All this is cool. And again, in the nice poly bags. Hendrix is known for that. And there is the A side. That is a very cool label and looks great on this translucent yellow. It looks almost orange. No, it is orange. It is orange. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, really cool. I'll we'll get out disc two, which should be on a red vinyl. Again, the poly bag. You got side C there. Looks good with that purple and gold label. Very cool. So getting to the last three here. Of course, these are all RSD, Ringo Star Day releases <laughs> for Record Store Day. My hype sticker got quite um, offset here, so i got to try my best to save that. It was the only copy that was there. So, I guess I was benefit of being first in line, but I don't know if people were all going to go for it, though, anyway. But, yeah. Let's see here. And, of course, this is a gatefold, so we'll open it up. Got to be a little more careful with that hype sticker, though. I don't want to cut the hype sticker. There it is. Let's see. I think we got it good. Try to fold it over here. There we go. I forgot to say, too, that Smash Mouth copy, that was uh, limited to 3,000, and the Hendrix was 5,000. Um, this, from everything I'm seeing, is 2,000 copies. So this was fairly limited. Something's sticking. There we go, down in the corner. So there we go, out of the shrink. I think me and Mr. Mayo said he wasn't going to open up his uh, gatefold. So I let him know I'll be opening mine. And there we go. Just some pictures from the show there. And some information there on the songs and such. And, or not the songs, I guess just the credits to the album there. And let's take a look at the vinyl. These did have some really cool sleeves I saw on his his uh, unboxing earlier. And both discs were different too, so that was really cool. And this was really nice. You get the whole concert on this, so uh, let's see. And this cool 
yellow vinyl, again translucent. I, I see a little trend here going, all this translucent vinyl. Because everybody, and oh wow, different colored labels on each side there. That's cool too. Purple and kind of a green. And here is disc two. Start with the inner sleeve here. And same color, but I'm assuming we're going to have, yeah, it's some different colored labels again. Very cool. And then we'll start with Ringo the Fourth next. And uh, there we go. No hype sticker, no real indication, or was there? Also learned from me and Mr. Mayo. And I think I got the blue one according to this. So we'll we'll see. We'll put put your, your theory to the test here, me and Mr. Mayo. And honestly, I think I'd like the blue one. He wanted the orange, I want the blue. And the blue is the more limited, too, from what I saw. So the orange looks like it was about a thousand copies. So this was pretty limited. And the the blue I'm showing is 755. Kind of an odd number there, but let's see. Yeah, I'll open it all up. Yeah, I had no clue when I was picking this up which one I was getting. We'll take a look again without the without the shrink. I don't know if I showed that side. And we'll open up the gatefold. Just a single disc again. Yep. His theory was right there. There is the blue. So kind of a bit of a marbling to this one too. All right, and it does have just a plain white sleeve, but it's polyline, so that that's always nice. And on to the last one here, the one that I was really hoping for. Boy, I do got the CD of this, but that was a bugger to chase down. I didn't get it for that bad of a price for how long I had been hunting for it at a decent price. I don't think I paid much more than 30 bucks for it, and it's in beautiful shape, too. And I'm talking the, the original CD that came out in the 90s, not the one that came out for Record Store Day here. I wish I would have found that, too. Probably would have kept it sealed, though. I think they only made 500 of them. I really doubted we were going to have one at my store here at Budget Music and Grand Forks. But there is Old Wave, the LP. It's cool with this OB. I really like this on this. Um, got all your info there, including showing what the record's going to look like. I do think I am going to keep this sealed because these are so hard to get into place. Even though I do think this would look kind of cool all open, but yeah, of course, the gold foil on it, even on the back, I was kind of shocked about that. I don't know if this is really, truly how the original was, maybe in Germany. I've never seen the, the vinyl copy at all of this, so it's part of why I really wanted it, because I figured this was going to be, even though it was pretty limited and record store day release, I figured this would be easier to find than a German or Canadian copy, so. All right, and this has got a cool inner sleeve, too. Pretty much just a recreation of the cover there and the reverse, minus the the writing and then your song info on that. And oh, I've been looking forward to seeing this in person. And yeah, that's in there pretty tight, too. All right, so we do got, yep, side one and side two. They're quite upside down from each other, but there we go, the the brown with white smoke splatter, not translucent, the first one not translucent, however, the light there, you can see through it fairly good, not, well, somewhat, I guess not fairly good, I'm holding that upside down, sorry, on the Broadway Entertainment label, so there it is, the one that I was losing sleep over, and here it is in my hand. So, And this, I think it was 2,000 copies on this. I, I might have said that earlier. Happy to have it. 
new addition to the collection. The one thing aside from the CD of Old Wave that I didn't find, one that I did really want to get, and I knew I was going to space it too going into it, and I did space it. Luckily, I, I filmed my little video and edited it quick and got it out onto YouTube, so I was still sitting in the parking lot, so I ran back in quick and even asked the guy, because I'm thinking, well, maybe there's you know one or two copies and somebody else grabbed it, but Brian Wilson did have a release too, just the soundtrack for that documentary that came out last year. I would have liked to have that too. Of course, I am a Beach Boys fan too, so wanted to get that. I did pass on the monkeys. I really thought about that one, but I did pass on that. Yeah, overall, I really had a good time. I, I loved having the, the North Dakota warmness on such a cold day <laughs> with my other two gentlemen in line there. Even once we were in the store, it wasn't too much craziness. You know, it was just people kind of went for where they were going to go. and Nobody was knocking each other over, so maybe my fears of Black Friday <laughs> Not as bad as they, they should be or something. I don't know. But yeah, I'll get wrapping this up because it might be a little long here, this one. Yeah, I just want to say again to all my subscribers, thanks for tuning in again. And to anybody that hasn't subscribed, please do. And to anybody that newly has subscribed, thank you. And keep tuning in. And do hit that notification bell so you know when I got a new video out. Also, uh, give a like to the video if you did like it and leave a comment so we can have a little conversation. So, of course, tomorrow there will be another video yet. I'll have some uh, Jimi Hendrix stuff that actually came out last week. We'll finally show that, the live, live from Los Angeles Forum. A little happy birthday tribute to him, I guess. So we're in the Hendrix shirt today too, so yeah. Anyways, we'll get this cut off here, and I'm Beetle Desino, signing out.